Red Sox fans, this gives me no more pleasure than you, but... Ah, who am I kidding? This is kind of fun. My top five most hated Red Sox players, in order. I'm going to go right ahead for you guys. Actually, this, this isn't even a list. This is just a piece of paper, so... I'm just going to do this from memory, because this team had some pretty despisable elements of it. Only one of which being its players. Now, honorable mention, of course, goes to the front office for putting together this lousy team. Or not doing anything for this lousy team. Or letting John Lester off of this lousy team. In fact, let's just start there. No, I don't hate John Lester. I hate the front office for the way that they botched what should have been the easiest signing in Red Sox history. A player who's been with your franchise since they were drafted, who said they wanted to come back to the team. You have the money to sign him, and yet we're sitting here at the trade deadline waiting to figure out who he got traded to. No. 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 You screwed that up, okay? That's just one of many people I hate. But seeing as how I can't just hate an entire organization, that might be a little weird. I'll just hate the top five players, or the low five players, depending on how you looked at it. Now, 2014 was known for struggling prospects and things that didn't just quite work out. In some of these cases, I can be forgiving. Experiments like A.J. Pruszynski, Grady Sizemore, and I don't even know, Jeremy Herrera and the 20 other people they threw on the roster. Whatever. You know what? Some of them were at the end of their career. Some of them were you know, struggling to get back for whatever reason. I'm not going to fault them for that. Number five on my most hated Red Sox list, Will Middlebrooks. Now, do I hate him as much as the other people on this list? No. And obviously, this was a struggle for me coming up with number five. The top four were pretty locked in. There were four players I consistently hated. One of the reasons I hated them was because they were in the lineup consistently enough for me to hate them. Will Middlebrooks was barely playing at all. And when he did, he was usually mediocre at best. But, you know, I don't hate him as much, because at least he didn't have the high expectations attached to him like some prospects that I will get into in just a little bit, don't you worry. Going down did hurt the team, but I'm not going to fault him completely for injury. I will just say that when he did play, he was usually underwhelming. You know, he'd either hit a home run or he'd strike out. I mean, he didn't have that many hits as it was this season. I think two or three of those were home runs, and that's about it. So, Middlebrooks, very fittingly, was middle of the road this season, if he even played. And just one of the... Disappointments on this team, one of many. Really, I could have picked any of 20 other people to be number five on this list. Number four, however, was a little more clear-cut. Jackie Bradley Jr. This guy was overpraised last year for having a great spring training, and this year was thrust into the almost impossible role of being Jacoby Ellsbury. I didn't think that was going to happen, but I also didn't think that he'd be the worst hitter I may have ever seen over a full season. No, I wasn't really following the Red Sox when they had Tony Clark. I heard he had a really bad season. But this was just atrocious. How do you have 30 RBIs in 127 games? Just show up and get 20! Christian Vasquez, who came in for the last fourth of the season, had more RBIs. I'm not even just talking about RBIs. He batted 198. Like, I don't even know how he got a base. Oh, but he did lead the team. Or no, I'm sorry. He was second on the team with eight stolen bases. Maybe he would have stolen some more if, I don't know, he ever got on base. I will give him that. His defense was something special. He had Torrey Hunter-like instincts in the outfield. He made some really great plays. And this, unfortunately, might not be his last year with the team. Although, you did see signs of um, John Farrell not playing him anymore. When John Farrell doesn't even play you anymore, and he played Stephen Drew until the bitter end, you know there's something wrong. I mean, Stephen Drew was not a great hitter for any of the teams he played for this season, but... Jackie Bradley, oh my god. And besides the fact that they have so many outfielders now, they need to do something. I mean, Jackie Bradley's not really making the case for himself. And I just feel like he never got better. He, he, he got a little better, and then he just went right down. You look at his line score all through the season. His average was like 210, 211, 210, 211, 205, 204, 2, 215. I think he got up to like 230 at one point. Woohoo! Jackie Bradley Jr. just sucks. As much as number three, who ironically wears number two, Xander Bogarts, the most overrated prospect I have ever seen. Granted, I'm only 25, I haven't seen every prospect, but in the last 5 or 10 years, I've been pretty up to date on what the prospects are. Hanley Ramirez was considered a high prospect, now he actually panned out with other teams. Usually it's actually the, the middling prospects that do pretty well. Look at Josh Reddick with the athletics, or even Brandon Moss with the same athletics. So, Red Sox always have kind of sucked, other than with Pedroia, Papelbon, and Lester. They've sucked at evaluating their own prospects. There's been some that have come up and done well. There's been some that, whatever. But Sander Bogarts, before anything even happened, he was just expected to be this great player. What was he, like 20 years old when he came up? Just expected to be this great player. Okay, put up all these great numbers. Where were they? An entire season of this mediocrity, and I understood they really had nowhere else to go. Because this front office didn't really do anything in the offseason to build this team. They really just didn't give a, give a crap, quite frankly. 
They were like, you know, Xander Bogarts and Jackie Bradley and Will Middlebrooks, you know, figure it out. We'll have a great lineup. Guess what? All three of them suck. Fortunately, unlike Jackie Bradley, he doesn't have defensive skills to bail him out. He made a ton of errors in the beginning of the season. And I'm not exaggerating when I say he cost them at least three or four games in the early goings. Now, those games don't turn out to mean as much when you lose, oh, I don't know, 91 of them. But still, Xander Bogarts just did nothing to, like, inflate the team, did everything to take the energy out of the room, and it was like, ah, oh, Xander Bogarts is up. Great. Another disappointment. Whew. I hate Xander Bogarts. He's just too overrated for just mediocre player. Now, he did get 46 RBIs somehow. I, I think he got, like, most of those in the last month of the season. He was literally at 7 RBIs for about 2 months. But again, great, great prospect. So glad we didn't trade him for anybody. God. So now we go to number two. Getting excited? I'm not. Another fairly overhyped player, not as much, but this guy's been with the team forever. And this entry might just be for the past, but this year didn't do him any favors. Clay Buckholtz, who actually led the Red Sox team in wins when you consider the fact that the good pitchers were traded. Clay Buckholtz got that uh, ERA down to 5.3 at the end of the season, but this guy just sucks. And it doesn't suck that he had a bad year. It sucks that his entire career is a spike of just enormous proportions. I, when you think about how long Buckholz has been in the majors, he's essentially started around the same time as Justin Verlander, who's an established veteran. So, I mean, you can't say he's a rookie anymore, obviously. Yet he's been up and down to AAA as recently as 2012. And yet he's like this Cy Young candidate and this awful pitcher all in one. And he has injury issues and mental concerns. They shut him down for two months of the season for an injury that I don't even think happened. He just makes me so angry. Like a lot of this team. He could be good when he tries. He could be good when everything's going perfectly. But, again, it's just ridiculous. You look at Clay Buckles throughout his career. 2007 throws a no-hitter. Looks pretty good. 2008 takes a step back. 2009 takes a bigger step back. 2010 comes back and his lights out for a year. Has a 2.3 year, right? Loses the Cy Young to David Price. And 2011 takes a step back. 2012 gets injured, comes back, is pretty decent. 2013, he lights out. Then he gets injured. He's not quite the same, but, you know, you kind of work through it, whatever, he's injured. Much like 2013 being gone, a lot of the goodwill is also gone. A lot of the sympathy for the injuries and the excuses is gone. Because this team sucked on an epic level. So, when you suck, you don't get as many of the doubts, you know, you don't get the benefit of the doubt that you got when you were decent. We're not going to put up with, you know, 30 starts from Clay Buckholz where 10 of them are good. I, I just, I, I can't do it. I don't know if you guys can do it. I can't do it. I, of all the pitchers they could have traded, I would have been very happy to trade him and Xander Bogarts out the door for Giancarlo Stanton. That's just me. I know that that's not a popular opinion, but I'm just tired of both of them. Especially Buckholz, though. I've just had a lot of time to just realize he's not that good. He can be good. He won't be good. Maybe next year he'll be great. The next year, he'll suck. So, again, whatever. Clay Buckholz, however, would have been the number one most hated Red Sox player had it not been for one very special trade deadline acquisition and a very symbolic move trading for my number one most hated Red Sox player, Alan Craig. Anyone remember this guy? This guy tried to cost the Red Sox the World Series last year with a little thing called obstruction, otherwise known as him existing. This fat load tripped around third base and got thrown out by a mile. And yet my friends, the umpires, who also could have made a few spots on this list, decided that he was safe because he's fat. So, yes, the Red Sox trade for Alan Craig, obstruction boy, to join a team that already couldn't hit. But hey, at least the fat guy can hit, right? Wrong. Fat guy batted about 133 with a home run and two RBIs to show for it. In addition, he made another blunder in the field this time. Gee, I thought he was a good fielder, too. He forgot how many outs there were in a game and just kind of lackadaisically threw a ball into the infield. Again, I know these games don't count, but when you're Alan Craig, you need all the breaks you can get. And I just, I don't like Alan Craig. I didn't like him in last year's World Series. That's no, you know, shock. Another player who, hey, his leg was broken, but he's hitting like 300 in the World Series. Anyone want to check him for steroids? No. But he goes to the Red Sox, and suddenly he's the worst hitter on the team with a team that has Jackie Bradley. No. No, no, no. Just one of the many players that I don't want to see back next year. Frickin' Alan Craig. It was symbolic, too, because they traded John Lackey, a great veteran who really willed the Red Sox through those playoffs along with Lester, 
You know, they traded two of their best pitchers, and I, I can't disagree with Cespedes. He was a good pickup, even though you have to pay him a lot of money, but for some reason you can't pay Lester, but whatever. But trading Lackey was just kind of arbitrary, and just to add insult to it, you got Alan Craig. Yeah, Joe Kelly's not bad, but you got Alan Craig. I would have just taken Joe Kelly, to be honest. I've been like, no, just keep Alan Craig. That's okay. That's okay. No, you want to get rid of him, too? We don't want him. Oh, crap. So, yes, Alan Craig, you are my most hated Red Sox player. Had I had to stay on the team that started the year, it probably would have been Clay Buckholtz. But Clay Buckholtz, you're bailed out because of the obstruction boy. So, there you have it, my top five most hated Red Sox players in a season just full of disappointments and rejections and just annoying things that happened or didn't happen. That's my top five. There are some players that I let off the hook. Maybe I'll get into them in a future rant, but right now I can only talk about this team for so long before I start having heart attacks, so that's all I got.